Hello again, I'm Stuart Leesk, owner and operator of Leespec. I was just gonna run you through a couple of things that's going on at the shop right now. Apologies in advance, I probably sound miserable. Texas allergies are the worst and I am very susceptible to them. So sorry, bear with me. For starters, this is a car that just came into the shop a couple of days ago. As you can see, it's a RB26 powered S15. He came to me with a couple of concerns and we found a couple more issues that I think I'm going to address while the car is here. Uh, namely, there's a potential overheat issue as well as generally just trying to take care of RB oil issues. So uh, what that means essentially is we are going to modify the oil pan. We are going to build a new catch can system. I'll kind of show you what it has now and, and where it can be upgraded and how and the cooling system needs a couple of revisions and upgrades in some areas that I'll walk you through real quick. Currently the catch can setup is vented to atmosphere. However, we're only venting off of one valve cover over on this side, this side is capped. Ideally, you, you want them both to be vented as freely as possible, especially if you're not putting vacuum on the system. It's very important that the evacuation is as smooth and as easy as possible. So none of my off the shelf products fit this car. We're gonna work together on something to uh, just take up this area right here. I kind of have to work around the cold pipe and some other, some other items, but I'm sure that I could build to suit and get something in place that works nicely for this car. The second thing before we go underneath the car to take a look at the pan is the cooling system. You'll notice that there's no filler neck on this radiator setup. That's because it's a tucked radiator. That's not uncommon. On this setup, I do believe they also offer an adapter fitting because this is 20 ORB. They offer an adapter fitting that kind of places the fill cap here. Uh, the previous shop that had done this assembly thought that that cap wasn't high enough. And actually that's not a bad call. Uh, it probably wasn't gonna be, because as you know, there's, uh, there's water passages that go through this mid-manifold upper tube right there. So what they did was they placed the fill point in the back corner of the engine bay. That's smart, that's a pretty good approach to take. However, this is only being fed, if you kind of look through down here, uh, this is a twin pass radiator, and that can is only being fed by the lower pass. What that means is you are getting a high spot, and you are able to bleed off some air, but the entire upper pass itself isn't actively ble being bled from. So you can imagine upper half of the radiator, this mid manifold, anything coming out of the upper radiator hose, anything going through the turbo, that's not inherently gonna go to the higher point and bleed off air as, uh, as the system runs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify this. I'm gonna use that lower line and make it act as a draw on the can so that the, the water pump creates a, a pull or a suction on it. And then I'm going to feed it from this bleeder bolt as well as another line that I'm gonna adapt at the highest point of the radiator so that we're bleeding off this partition, not this partition down here. Next up, let me show you what we're contending with on the oil pan down below and we'll go ahead and get started. So underneath the car, this is what we're working with. Uh, this is the catch can where the, uh, the upper passenger side valve cover is feeding into. It's a little bit small in capacity and that's kind of a problem for these engines. So this, that's one of the reasons why he wanted to kind of reapproach this and get this fixed. This was just a temporary solution. Second problem is the oil pan and this is kind of a two part deal. Uh, you'll notice that obviously this is a rear wheel drive configuration car, so this differential has been cut off the oil pan itself. Where it was cut off has a slow leak, so that will be the first thing that I'm going to address. The second thing that I'm going to address is its capacity as it sits. So real quick, I'm going to bolt up the front sway bar so that we can figure out all of our extremities and get measurements of how much space I have to widen and increase the capacity of this sump as it sits in this engine bay because we since we don't have a diff, we can maximize on area a little bit better than we can in a standard GTR application. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the sway bar up and then we'll take a look at what we're dealing with and what kind of area we have around the oil pan to uh, increase its capacity. Okay. 
as is the case sometimes when we do swaps and we kind of bring subframes from other cars into the equation and we bring pieces and components from other cars, there's a little bit of fitment issues that we're working around right now with the sway bar. But this generally gives us enough of an idea of where the sway bar is going to sit and what pathway it's going to articulate along. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to figure, it, figure out what's safe to start the cut on the face of the pan and then I'm going to start measuring how wide we can go. Um, as I mentioned before, this side of the sump is usually just a little bit undersized to make clearance for the differential on a GTR. I don't have that situation here, so I'll go ahead and just extend both sides equally, just making sure that we avoid the subframe cups themselves and we should be good to go. So if it's at this point and it comes out six inches, it will clear as well. And honestly, I'm not even going to take it far enough to where it exposes the uh, input shaft, I believe. But if you want to take a look, see what kind of Tom fuckery Nissan did here. You see them? Yeah. Those motherfuckers. That's the coldest slight I've ever seen in my fucking life. And I think that's where I'm gonna call it for tonight on this thing. Uh, so what I did, you'll see some notes on the oil pan. I kind of noted my clearances and what I have to work around. I was a little bit more ecstatic about being able to just get a gargantuan extension in there. But the problem I ran into is this motor mount setup kind of juts forward, whereas the GTR sticks back a little bit. So I'm still gonna have to kind of cut the wings out around the motor mounts. Anyways, I made some notes. I know where all my cuts need to be. I know where all my clearances need to be. So now I just need to finish getting this pan off tomorrow. I'll go ahead and cut it. I'll get it ready. I'll build the custom extension. I'll start thinking up some ideas for the catch can, how I wanna do that and get everything rolling on this project. Now I kinda wanna catch you up on where I'm at right now on the R34 GTR. Uh, I think that last time we talked, we were in the middle of doing the rear air jacks. The rear air jacks are welded in, primed, and good to go now. So let me take you over there and I'll kinda show you some of the stuff that I've got going on over there. Okay, so this is where we're at on the 34. Uh, I was just kinda going over with you that the rear air jacks are welded in and installed. Just like the front, so I'm going to make some gussets and tie it into the, the panel work in the cage. But if you look underneath here, you can see where the sleeves protrude. You can see where I've triangulated it back a little bit to the sill. I've added some bracing on the frame rail, which was a recommendation from my buddy Steve. Thank you very much, Steve, for uh, some of the tips and tricks on this install. Uh, all your advice made it much easier to get everything done. So I always appreciate uh, you lending an ear and uh, helping me out. 
I've got both sides set right now. Um, they're just kind of at rough height or whatever. They're not final. I've got the front in as well. They're set to rough height. They're not final. And you'll notice that the car is no longer on a rotisserie. It is now on a rolling cart. Originally, part of this project was we were going to be replacing the core support. It had seen some damage previously in its life. So I went ahead and undid the spot welds and got the core, core support off and got everything ready for the, the new one to graft on. But it's important before you remove anything that's tying these two frame rails together structurally that you get the, the weight of the car off of those frame rails. So I've temporarily removed it from the rotisserie. It does make my job a little less hard, but it's gonna let me finish the engine bay. As you'll notice, I haven't spot welded anything that kind of cantilevers past the strut towers. I can go through and delete a couple of the holes that I couldn't get to while the core support was on. I've got some room to kind of go through, clean up old glue, clean up uh, all of these areas, and finish stitch welding and get the new core support on and shave the core support as well, as it has a lot of holes and everything that we're not gonna use. In addition, we're also gonna be visiting the master cylinders on the firewall. Since this car now runs a pedal box, these are no longer necessary. So whether I'm just gonna be remote mounting reservoirs as a placeholder or something, I'm, I'm not too sure yet. I'm still kind of thinking through this one. I wanna, I wanna let an idea kind of click that I really like before I do it. But there will be some change in this area. There's probably gonna be a strut tower bar that goes across everything, but that might be something that we do later after the motor's in so that we know what kind of space and confinement we're working within. Uh, you'll notice that the, I'm just kind of moving along, sorry, but you'll notice the tubing bender is set up. Uh, it's set up with a smaller die because I'm taking care of some projects that have been lingering for a bit. First project is going to be triangulating the, finger, uh, the fender brace point. I was welding on my first base plate and realized I am out of gas. So kind of crappy timing for that, but I've got a plate here, a plate here, and a plate here. And I'm just gonna kind of build a triangulated setup and get some strength back into this uh, upper fender point. And uh, as, as this project moves on, I'll probably take some B-roll footage of some of the fabrication and some of the steps and, and everything else. It's gonna be kind of like a nodule setup because I've got very tight clearance where it has to sit and tie the, inside the fender right here. So anyways, I'll kind of go more in depth on this. I won't, I won't leave it blank later on. Moving on to inside the car, you'll notice that there is a lot missing from the transmission tunnel currently. What I did is I've removed any semblance of the e-brake assembly and I've gotten rid of every indention that's not necessary so that we're left with a nice, smooth, even surface. The goal behind that is, I, I believe I've told you guys before, the driver seating position is very far back on this car. So in a perfect world, the transmission shifter would kind of still be in a relevant spot to the driver. But since we're going with an OS88 and it's something that's kind of already predetermined, we're not gonna have that luxury. So I need to do some calculations on exactly where it's gonna land, but I anticipate having to do a remote mount shifter on this car. So what I'm gonna do is I'll do a, a linkage assembly from the OE shifter location and we'll pick up somewhere around right here so that it's comfortable for the driver. Its exact location is TBD, but that's something that's in the works. That's something that we gotta get taken care of. We also, I, I just mentioned, we're doing the OS88 transmission for this car. So once that arrives, I'll make sure that we're good on transmission tunnel clearances that no further changes are necessary. I have heard mixed reviews. Some people say they had to massage the transmission tunnel, some people didn't. Since we're kind of at the bare paint stage, instead of just massaging, if uh, something needs to be cut out and made proper so that we can work on the car easier in the future, then that's gonna be the, the path that we take. But I can't finish the transmission tunnel rather until the transmission is here and I can test fit, dry fit, and make sure that everything's good to go. But I have shown some bits and pieces of this project previously. What I did here is I've gusseted the upright off of the, the mounting point for the trunk hinge, and I've done that to give this parcel shelf a little bit of strength back. If you're familiar with the 34 GTR from the factory, you'll know that this comes pretty far forward and then creates a rear shelf for the back of the rear seat. So when you cut all that out, it does get a little flimsy. It loses rigidity. So I added those two corner gussets cleaned up some of the, the welds on the roll cage base. Now that they were accessible, they were not accessible before. And that whole rear end is kind of uh, solidified now. It's to the point now where you can't actually move it by hand. So huge improvement there. Everything was good. 
Air jacks are good to go. We can pretty much write those off as done, less a little bit of interior gusseting. And now I'm in the middle of kind of finishing up the engine bay. So as the engine bay proceeds and moves along, I'll keep updating with videos, I'll kind of show you guys uh, the steps I take to do the core support for those interested. Uh, this car isn't gonna need strut tops or anything like that. It's an actual, actually very healthy chassis, but I'll share any sort of repairs or anything that, we, that I run into along the way. That does it for the mechanical side of the garage. Uh, here in the fab shop, I've also been busy trying to keep up with my product lineup. Everybody that pre-ordered the R32 ABS catch cans, this is the first half of the pre-order batch. I've got all the supplies and everything good to go. I'm gonna drop the ones off at powder that are getting powder coated and the ones that are in raw finish, as soon as the sumps arrive, I'll be bolting them together and shipping them out. I've been trying to stay as busy as possible on this, making sure that this pre-order wasn't something that dragged on. Uh, in the past, I have ran into issues where I have delays from machine shops, et cetera. I'm really doing my best to try and streamline this process and get rid of the, the weights and the lulls. So once this pre-order is done, don't worry, there will still be ways to order this. Uh, TF Works is gonna be fully stocked with this product from now on moving forward. And tf-works.com will be the place to go ahead and, and place your order and to check out anything else that I offer in my product line. Uh, speaking of stuff that I offer in my product line, I'm also in the midst of working up an R33 GTR oil cooler kit. Uh, probably doesn't look like much, obviously it's just a core and a couple of fittings, but this is uh, something I've been waiting on for a while. I got some fancy banjo fittings to have a little bit of fun with the fitment on this one. The short explanation for the product is going to be a custom, custom inlet setup. CFRP inlet ducting, BMRS hoses, IEE hard lines underneath the car. I really hope that it's gonna be something that I can offer somebody that is kind of looking for the more upper end of an oil cooler kit. Uh, I know that there's a lot of options out there. There's $500 options. There's, I could piece this my, together myself for cheaper options. I totally get it. And I don't think that there's any right or any wrong. I'm just trying to offer something that I kind of feel matches more along the lines of an upper end product and that's that's just my opinion and that's my goal and that's what i'm trying to offer you guys so i'll keep posting information on this as it goes and any other projects that i've got in the works i will post a video that's a little bit more in depth about the abs location catch cans when they're done because they have a custom removable sump they're fully serviceable they're unlike anything that i've offered before and i am very happy to show you the final product once I've got one fully assembled and, and kind of ready to go and in the flesh so that I can kind of walk you through the product. Uh, again, it's something that I'm very happy about, something I've been working on for a very long time, and I've got some very good friends that have helped me on this along the way. So I think that's enough babbling for one night. That kind of covers everything. I will keep everybody up to date on the products. I will keep everybody up to date on the S15, and I will for sure keep everybody up to date on the GTR race car as that is the coolest thing that's happening in my shop right now. So I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to me, watch my channel, check out what I'm doing, and hopefully interact, ask questions, comment, uh, judge, whatever. It, it doesn't matter to me. I think it's, it's all good. Just interaction and everything else is, is very positive. So again, I appreciate y'all taking the time to watch these videos. And uh, if there's anything that you wanna see different than what I'm offering right now, please let me know and I'd be happy to oblige. Thanks.